Good morning, Grand Rising everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a very special flow. It's gonna be a hip opener focus flow. It's gonna be roughly around half an hour for those days that we wanna to dedicate to our practice, but we may not have a lot of time. So getting it in with the most amount of time that we can. And I just wanna talk about hip openers real quick. Hip openers, they are called the treasure chest of emotion sometimes. And what this means is that sometimes a lot of tension or emotional distress that we go through has a space where it likes to go in your body. And the hips is one of those places, the shoulders as well. But the hips, we tend to hold a lot of tension there in the hips. And oftentimes that also is connected to lower back issues and lower back discomfort and pain because it's very, very much connected. And so today, as we dive into our practice, let yourself feel whatever emotions come up, maybe memories or thoughts or stories, things that you may have forgotten about might come up and surface. Let yourself be the observer of what shows up for you. Let yourself be present for yourself. And then when it's time to let it go, it's time to breathe it out and let it go. So give yourself permission to feel, permission to breathe out what doesn't serve you and to breathe in new light and energy for yourself. So let's go ahead and get started. And we'll start today in Sukta Bhadakanasana, laying all the way down on our backs. From here, we're gonna take the knees at a bend, round the feet, and then from here, the knees come out to the sides and the feet come together. Maybe take a moment to walk your shoulders down the mat. Maybe wiggle your hips a little just to make yourself comfy. And from here, we're going to take our left hand to our heart and our right hand to our belly. If this were to feel like too much on your hips, you can always bring some cushion underneath your knees. Take a moment to tuck your chin in slightly just to find a little bit more length in the back of your neck. From here, give yourself permission to close your eyes if you haven't already. Tuning out the world in order to tune into ourselves. And bringing our undivided attention into our breath. Relaxing the muscles in our face. Letting the entire body just relax and stay in the stillness. Enjoying and savoring that stillness. From here, find your intention. What brought you to spend this time with yourself on your mat today? What brought you here? Mindfully breathe into your intention, merge your intention with your breath so that you can carry it with you throughout your practice. And perhaps taking here a collective deep breath in through your nose. Notice your right hand rise as you fill your belly up with air. And then sighing it out. Feel your belly drop. From here, coming back into our normal breath. If you would like to engage in ujjayi breath throughout your practice, you're more than welcome to. But as long as we're breathing, we're doing it right. 
From here, we're just gonna slowly extend the arms overhead. You can keep your eyes closed or maybe gently flutter them open. And from here, we're gonna close the knees together like a book and extend the legs out. Get a full body stretch here. Like if you just woke up, pulling your body apart, maybe wiggle here if that were to feel good. Maybe flex and point your toes, move around your wrists. Maybe growing a smile from how good this may feel. <laughs> and when you are ready, we're gonna bring our knees into our heart. Give ourselves a gentle hug here, a gentle squeeze. From here, we're gonna grab onto the knees with our hands and we're gonna make circles here with our knees. Let your hands make this movement. We're just gonna massage that part where your low back meets your hips about three or four circles in one direction and then switching the direction of those circles notice what shows up here from here hug your right knee in extend your left leg out from here move around that right knee from side to side when you're ready, we're going to take that right knee over towards the right edge. Make sure that your left hip stays grounded. Just notice what it feels like to gently open up your knee and your hip over to the side. Maybe move around that foot if you'd like to add some. And when you're ready, gently come back through center. We're just going to switch sides, bringing the left knee in and extending the right leg out. This time I feel a little different. And even though that right leg is resting on the earth, it's still active, allowing you to ground to the earth. Notice how this side feels as you move, if you'd like to add those movements. And then mindfully, when you're ready, setting that left knee over to the left side, gently opening up the hip, and making sure that right hip stays grounded. This is where that engagement in that bottom leg comes in. Maybe add some movements if you'd like. And then from here, slowly we come back through center, bringing both knees back inside our heart. From here, we're gonna bring the forehead to our knees and round the spine here like if you were a little tiny ball. <laughs> from here, relax your head back to the earth. You have options here. You can rock forward and back. If you do, think about that rounding in your spine. Perhaps you give yourself a couple back massages here. If you do not feel like rocking, you don't have to. If you don't, just gently set the knees over to the side and then find your way up. <laughs> We're gonna find a Sukhasana seated position. So gently coming into that crisscross in whichever method you'd like to get there. Once we get into our crisscross seated position, take your hands at your knees, leading with your heart, take circles here. About three or four in one direction, keeping the hip bones grounded. switching the direction. Just bringing some movement here, whichever way resonates. And whenever you're ready, we're going to take our hands like little cups. We're going to set them behind us. From here, inhale, lengthen through your spine. And on the exhale, start leading with your heart, keeping a straight spine here. Notice the hip bones nice and grounded, helping you get that stretch. You can stay right here, still finding your length, or if you'd like, from here we walk the hands out in front and we fold forward. Making sure that we're not lifting in our sitting bones, staying nice and grounded and engaging our breath to release what must go. When you're ready, we're gonna rise back up. We're just gonna switch our legs here. So whichever leg was in front now goes behind. The one that was behind now goes forward. This way we can access our other hip here. And before we come onto the other side, take a moment to set the right hand down next to you. Inhale, reach up through your left hand and then send it over to the side. 
making sure that bottom shoulder is relaxed. You can stay on your fingertips. You can even take the forearm down, but just making sure we're not lifting from that left hip. Let that left hip ground you. From here, back through center. Notice perhaps the difference between one side of your body and the other. And when you're ready, other side. Left hand comes down. Inhale, find that length through your side body. And then exhale, send that length over to the side. If your heart is kicking forward, think about sending your right shoulder back. From here, gently back to center. Hopefully now we're a little bit more balanced. And from here, we get ready for that forward fold. Hands like little cups behind us. Inhale, lengthen, and then exhale with a straight spine. Start leaning forward. Shoulders away from the ears. We always want to find the length before we find the fold. So that's the idea here. Maybe you'd like to stay here growing. This is a great stretch. Or maybe you want a little bit more and you walk those hands out in front. Perhaps maybe fold. Taking conscious deep breaths. From here, mindfully, we find our way back through center. Walking our hands back in, growing back through our spine. And from here, we find a tabletop coming on our hands and knees. From our tabletop position, we're going to tuck our toes, lift our hips, and find a downward facing dog. Here, feel free to bicycle out your legs, walk your legs in place, let this feel good. <laughs> When you're ready here, gently bring the feet together. Notice what it feels like to take a narrow stance in your down dog. Send the heart back as you exhale. When you're ready, we're going to send the right leg up to the sky. Bend the knee to open up the hip. Think about tracking your right knee towards your left glute. Setting the foot to the outer edge of your mat. Maybe staying here in stillness. Maybe making some circles with our knee, maybe three in one direction, maybe three in the other direction. When you're ready, re-extending to release that leg. Maybe walking our legs in place, coming back into that narrow stance. We're going to come for the other side. Left leg now comes up. Bend the knee, open up through the hip. Think about sending the knee up to the sky, the foot over towards the edge of your mat. Maybe staying in our stillness, really grounding through that bottom heel, or maybe taking some circles here. Finding your variation. When you're ready to release, re-extend to then find our down dog. From here, we're going to take our legs hip distance for that normal down dog. From here, we're going to inhale to our tippy toes and then slowly tippy toe your way to your hands. Finding a forward fold at the top of the mat. Let your knees relax. Let your head relax too. Maybe wrap dog, grabbing onto opposite elbows and swaying. From here, inhale, halfway lift, and then exhale to just fold a little more. When you're ready, we're going to bend in the knees a lot, and we're going to step our right foot back. So you want here the length that feels right for you, typically about the length of one of your legs. From here, lower that knee down, untuck your toes. Your hands can stay supported at your hips or reaching up for your Anjaneyasana low lunge. Making sure that that knee is tracking the ankle. Making sure we're relaxing in the shoulders. One more breath here. Stay present for the breath in. Present for the breath out. When you're ready, hands come down. 
From here, we're gonna set that left foot over to the outer edge of our mat. So just gently scooch that foot over to the side. From here, both hands come on the inside. Finding our lizard lunge. Just take a moment to activate your back leg. Tuck your toes, lift it up. Rock forward and back. Pressing the earth away just like we would in a plank. You can keep that leg active if this feels really good, or if you want to relax that knee, untuck your toes, you certainly can. You can also stay on your hands or perhaps come to the forearms. We're going to take two variations of lizards. So for now, just make sure that your entire foot is nice and grounded, all four corners of your foot, and taking deep, deep breaths in your variation. If you'd like to stay as you are, you certainly can. If you want to come for that second variation, we're going to come onto the outer edge of that foot. Only if it feels right. If it doesn't, then please listen to your body and settle the foot back down. Maybe gently, very gently, making sure we're not pushing. Just gently setting that knee a little bit away from you just to open up a bit more. If this leads you to take your left hand back, bend your back knee and find your foot, you certainly can. The options are there, the choice is always yours, just like life. Life will always give you options, it's always you to choose. From here, we're definitely going to release. Set the foot back down if you were on the outer edge of that foot. Settle both hands to the earth. From here, we're going to tuck our toes behind us, activate that leg and step it forward. We're gonna take a semi-wide forward fold. So taking both feet to the outer edges of the mat and just folding here, letting the body relax. Perhaps here, bend towards one knee. Notice how that feels. Maybe gently bend towards the other. From here, we're gently going to heel toe our feet back together or hip distance, whichever resonates. Inhale, halfway lift, find that length, and then exhale, fold once more. We're going to come for the other side, so bending in the knees. Now the left foot steps back. From here, find your distance and find your Anjaneyasana. Lower your knee down, untuck your toes. Make sure that your knee is tracking your ankle. Hands can stay supported at your hips or up to the sky. Feel energy sparking through your fingertips. Feel the connection with the earth and the connection with the sky. Perhaps this side feels a little bit different from the other. One more breath here, staying present. From here, we release the hands back to earth. We're going to find that lizard. So stepping that right foot over to the right outer edge of our mat. Both hands now have room to be on the inside. From here, tuck the toes, activate that leg. Maybe rock forward and back. From here, you can keep that leg active, you can relax it, but again, making sure that for the first variation, our foot is completely supported on the earth, nice and grounded, especially through that inner edge. You can take your variation on the forearms or on your hands. There might be a tendency to want to drop in our shoulders here. Let's do our best to press out of our shoulders. Even if you're in your forearms, you can still really press the earth away through your forearms. If you'd like that variation, perhaps coming onto the outer edge of your right foot, maybe, just maybe, mindfully and gently, settling that knee a little farther away from you. 
If this leads you to reach back with your right hand to bend that knee and find your foot, by all means, feel free to express yourself. If you did so on the other side, you might notice this side is a little different. From here, we're gonna bring that foot back down, grounding it fully. Support the hands to earth, tuck the toes, activate that leg, and gently here, step it back, find your downward facing dog. Maybe walking up the legs, notice how that felt on our hips. From here, feet together behind, right leg comes up, bend the knee, open up the hip and find a half pigeon. So we're gonna settle that right knee in between our hands. If you're feeling more open, you can set that knee towards the outer edge, but you can always add. So maybe starting at the center first. If it feels like too much to extend that leg behind you, you can always bring it in closer. Wanna make sure that our right hip is supported. Finding a deep breath in to grow through our vertebrae and a deep breath out to just surrender to the earth. Let your breath do its thing. Let the breath do its magic. Let yourself be present for your breath. And present for what may show up. Couple more mindful breaths here. Let yourself surrender to what you must surrender to. Notice where you're trying to hold on and just letting it go. When you're ready, we're slowly going to find our way back up, rising up through our vertebrae. Take your time to get back up. From here, that leg that was behind us is gently going to come forward. Our right knee is going to stay at the center of the mat underneath, and that left foot can come on either side, or maybe both knees come on top. But the right leg is at the bottom, just like in our pigeon, and the left leg is now on top instead of behind us. From here, inhale, lengthen, and exhale to fold. You might notice this in your glutes. So notice what may show up. Let your body relax as much as you can. It might be a more of a challenging forward fold to do here, but just a general idea of bowing to ourselves here. to release we slowly walk the hands back closer to us and from here we release one leg at a time the left leg that's on top first and then from here both knees come back find a tabletop position from here take a moment to gently send your hips over to the right breathing here maybe wiggling here adding some movement and then to the other side Breathing, maybe finding some movement. So pressing through our hands, through our shoulders. And when you're ready, finding our last downward dog, perhaps noticing a difference from your first down dog in this one. From here, feet together behind, left leg comes up. We bend through the knee, we open up the hip just to prep ourselves for that half pigeon now on the other side. Settling that knee towards the top of the mat or towards the outer edge, your choice. That leg can be far back or closer. Wherever you choose, 
Find that length as you breathe in and then find the fold as you breathe out. Feel your belly hit your leg as you breathe, inviting those filled belly-like breaths. Perhaps here, going into gratitude, what are three things to be grateful for today. Notice if you're clenching your jaw, soften your jaw as you take your final breaths here. When you're ready to release, support your hands closer to your body to help you rise up. Taking your time, and when you're ready, that right leg now comes forward. Readjusting ourselves here, having that left knee at the bottom towards the center of the mat, that right foot can come on either side of your knee, or maybe it comes on top. Make sure you feel nice and grounded here. Taking a deep breath in to grow, and a deep breath out to release. Here where you can surrender, whether it's in your body or in your thoughts. From here, gently rising back up, walking our hands closer to our body. Releasing that right leg first and then the left. We're going to settle the feet down. Maybe scooch ourselves a little closer. Make sure that there's nothing behind you to settle you down to the mat and bring the knees into your heart center. Perhaps notice a difference on how your hips feel now. From here, we're going to take a happy baby. Grabbing onto the outer edges of your feet or anywhere in your legs that might feel right for you doing our best to ground our tailbone down to support our low back. You can find stillness here or maybe some play, extending one leg at a time or both. Trying to transcend our quadriceps towards the earth our knees towards the sides of our chest, our tailbone really down to earth. From here, we release, bringing our knees back into our hearts. We're gonna hug the left knee in, extend the right leg down. Notice how this feels the second time around. From here, we're gonna take a supine twist, maybe bringing in some movement before you do. When you're ready, taking that left knee across your body, easing away from the knee for your twist. If it feels better to bend both knees, feel free to bend both knees. If you have a wall, it might be a little challenging, but you got this. <laughs> Perhaps closing your eyes and just focusing on your breath.
When you're ready, we come back to center, bring the knees back in, both of them back into your heart. Coming for the other side, right knee hugs in, left leg extends out. Maybe bring some movement in. And when you're ready to take your supine twist or whichever variation of a twist, we send that knee across and we take our gaze towards the opposite side. Our head, our eyes are an extension of the spine, so really making sure that we're gazing away from that knee. From here, we come back to center, bring both knees back in. And when you're ready, we're going to take our Shavasana, our final resting pose. So you can extend your legs out, your arms out like traditional Shavasana. If you'd like to come back into that pose that we started with, the Supta Baddha Konasana, you can. You can take your legs up the wall, take seated meditation, however you'd like to end your practice. I'm going to end in a seated meditation so that my voice can travel better. I really encourage you to just lay out on the earth on your mat and enjoy this time here where we do nothing but we do everything here. When we take our Shavasana, we get a chance to let all the energy that we move settle itself into our body. This is where muscle memory also takes place. where we get to spend time with ourselves and our soul. Let the muscles around your face relax. Let your jaw relax. Shoulders relax, perhaps even rocking them a little farther away from your ears. And just feel a wave of peace flow through your body. Feeling peace from the top of your head. All the way down to your fingers and toes. And just diving into that peace. Make each moment count. In many ways, our lives are like a movie reel, made up of individual frames and single moments, each one leading into the next. 
It is a waste of energy to try and hold on to moments of the past. By the time we begin reaching for them, they're gone. It is just as poor timing to try to jump into moments that have not yet arrived. Stay in the present moment, the frame that you're in now. That's the only moment where happiness, joy, and love can be found. And remember to make each moment count. stay where you are for as long as you desire. I just ask that when it is time to continue on with your day, you are gentle and nurturing with yourself as you slowly rise up. Thank you for joining me today. Thank yourself for showing up, for feeling what you needed to feel and releasing what you released today. The light in me sees, respects, honors, and loves the light in each and every one of you. Namaste.